how to install Japanese in your brain and speak Japanese naturally and instinctively. If you have trouble constructing sentences or your mind goes blank when you try to speak Japanese, this video is for you. So when you speak Japanese, are you thinking about things like, oh, what's the verb ending again? What's the particle? Ni, wa, or ga? If you're thinking about these things consciously, of course it's difficult to speak Japanese. There's just so much information to process. But think about when you speak English. Are you thinking about things like, oh, what's the past tense of get? Is it get it or got? What's the correct verb forms? Is it have you seen or have you saw? You're probably not thinking about these things. If you are, you have trouble speaking English. You're focusing on the message and communication. I mean, when a police officer pulls over your car, you're probably not thinking about being grammatically correct. You're thinking about how to get out of the situation. So how can you be like that when you speak Japanese? Well, it comes down to two types of knowledge. When you speak your native language, you're using implicit non-conscious knowledge. You probably don't know how you acquire the language. That's why native speakers typically can't really explain how their language works because their knowledge is implicit. But when people learn a second language, most of them default to focusing on explicit knowledge, something they can consciously learn, memorize, explain, and retrieve. Think about the typical language classroom. You have a teacher who explains things, you take notes, you go home reviewing your notes, trying to memorize things that you've learned. You might do some workbook exercise to retain pieces of knowledge. And then you have a test to see if you have memorized those pieces of knowledge. But here's the problem. Explicit knowledge doesn't automatically turn into implicit knowledge. It might help, but these are two different types of knowledge. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a friend, which I hope you do. If I give you a thousand photos of faces of people, you can probably identify your friend if they're actually your real life friend. Now, can you explain how to recognize your friend without looking at their photo in a way that I can identify them among a thousand people? It's probably going to be impossible. It's because you use implicit knowledge to recognize your friend and it's nearly impossible for somebody else to identify your friend among a thousand people just by accumulating explicit knowledge. You know how hard it's going to be, right? So the way many people learn Japanese is like trying to identify somebody by learning explicit pieces of knowledge. What's the distance between their eyes? Things like that. It's just an analogy, so it's not exactly the same. But you get my point. So to acquire Japanese, instead of just accumulating explicit knowledge, you need to acquire implicit knowledge. So how do you do it? Well, the principle is actually very simple. Input. You need a lot of input and you need to understand it. That's how you acquire your first language. Even before you were born, you were exposed to tons and tons of input. And as a toddler, you continue to be exposed to input and your brain started to build a complex network of implicit knowledge. Of course, you got some explicit knowledge because you can be like, Mommy, what does the mule mean? But you've acquired most of your language implicitly. Now, some people can be like, hey, babies acquire a language differently than adults. And that's not false. Sure, there are some differences. Unlike babies, as an adult, you already know a couple of languages. And that can interfere with the process. And typically, all babies fully acquire their language, while adults, it really depends on the learner. Some people are stuck with the Nihongo Jozu stage, while other people can reach the kami stage and adult learners need a bit more help. But also, there's a lot of similarities and one of the key things is input. It doesn't matter if it's your first language or your second language, the more input you get, the more language you acquire. And some people be like, but I've watched 1117 episodes of One Piece and I haven't acquired Japanese, what's going on? But here's another important thing, you need to understand input. If you're watching an anime with English subtitles, you're understanding subtitles, you're acquiring English. But if you watch raw anime, if you understand it, at least enough of it, you will start acquiring Japanese. And maybe you've acquired some words like yamete, which is a very common expression in family-friendly anime. But seriously, many of my non-Japanese friends watched Spy Family because I was like, hey, even if you don't usually watch anime, you should watch this. They loved it and then they ended up acquiring this expression. Waka waka. Which is something we say when we are excited. And now my friends can use this expression perfectly in the perfect context. You know why? Because they understood the expression, 
they ended up acquiring it. Now imagine you understand four sentences and watch a thousand episodes of One Piece. Can you see how much you can acquire Japanese? Although I'd recommend other anime where characters speak more naturally. Unless you want to sound like a shonen anime character, like NANI? Well, uh, then here's the next question. What if you don't understand input? What should you do? Well, if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will explain natural native Japanese from zero while giving you a lot of natural and easy input. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Yuta. But, but what if you don't want to learn Japanese with me? Don't worry, there's plenty of other ways and this is where explicit knowledge comes into play. I said explicit knowledge doesn't automatically turn into implicit knowledge, but I didn't say explicit knowledge doesn't help, because it can help. If you come across a word that you don't know, you can look it up or you can read some grammar explanations. These things can help you understand your input. It's just focusing solely on explicit knowledge like memorizing, practicing, retrieving or testing won't lead to a lot of acquisition. I've actually met this girl who was going to a Japanese language school and she was doing her homework. You know what that was? She was doing this drill from Minna no Nihongo where she had to handwrite her answers and the drill was pretty mechanical, meaning that the focus is on the structure rather than the meaning. So you can even answer without understanding the meanings of these sentences. So yes, technically she could have acquired a little bit of Japanese, but not a lot. And she was spending like an hour on it. Imagine you can spend the same amount of time getting a lot of input, understanding it and enjoying it you acquire much, much more Japanese. Now there's another girl I met who, by the way, was super pretty, but that's not relevant. Her Japanese was really, really natural for a non-native speaker. So I asked her how she learned Japanese. You know what she said? Oh, I didn't take any classes or formal instruction. I just watched a lot of anime because I'm a huge weeb. Do you see the difference? I'm pretty sure she looked up words in dictionaries or whatever, but her focus was getting a lot of input, understanding it, and enjoying the process. That's how you do it. And some people are like, but where can I find resources? Well, have you heard of this top secret network called the internet? Well, you guys are really lucky because today you have things like YouTube, TikTok, Netflix, we can get plenty of native content, instruction materials, dictionaries, explanations. You don't really have to spend a penny on it. And if you want to spend some money to save time, you can hire a private tutor without leaving your house. It's amazing, just so many options, free or paid. And I can also give you an option because if you want to learn Japanese with me, I'll help you acquire natural native Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak. Unlike a natural non-native like textbook Japanese that's made for the textbook ecosystem. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Utah.